uh, Eddie Jackson from Queensryche. Queensryche um, started in the early 80s and uh, um, we were kind of, uh, you know, had a lot of influences, uh, you know, growing up with, uh, during that time with like Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath and to name a few, you know, but um, we, uh, you know, formed together as, as this band and had this one common goal of, you know, we wanted to play music. We had that passion and, uh, you know, uh, going through you know, that sort of phase into the mid 80s. Um, you know, there was a time where, you know, uh, you know, you, you kind of, when you first start, there's a certain identity that you're trying to create, but uh, maybe it took perhaps a couple of releases, you know, before um, we sort of found our identity, which was, I think, around uh, the Rage for Order album, which was released in 86. Um, the first two couple of albums, uh, and the EP certainly had some influences there, and you can tell by our compositions, but I think around the, the Rage for Order release back in 86, it, uh, um, that, I th that's the album where I felt um, we started to create our own identity, our own sound. <music> Through the mid-80s into the late 80s, um, you know, we had released Operation Mindcrime. Um, a very, you know, sort of uh, the type of album that you probably wouldn't expect um, at such an early stage in your career because we only had uh, three full-length albums released uh, and the EP. So, you know, there was that, you know, is this something that, you know, we want to take a risk on? Is it something that is just part of us? And uh, we just felt... It was um, it was time for some sort of a, a different direction, and uh, we kind of uh, decided to um, collectively uh, put together this sort of um, conceptual album that uh, uh, Jeff um, had a had a great idea behind this all. You know, you have no idea, you know, how it's going to get perceived. You know, but um, it wasn't that wasn't really. Uh, an issue for us. We just wrote and felt what we wanted to write and feel. You know, um, it was something that was perhaps a bit risky, but at the same time, we were that sort of band. You know, just you know, our, our motto from the beginning was no limits. You know, we just whatever comes to mind is what we're going to go with, and uh, you know, and that's how that came about. But you know, uh, then Empire followed that, um, which was a very successful album for us. Um, we certainly got a hell of a lot more radio play um, from that album compared to the, the previous albums, but maybe perhaps the, the songs were a bit more radio friendly, friendly I don't know. Um, it's, that's something that's out of your control, but um, that movement uh, with, you know, uh, with us, um, Metallica, um, you know, Iron Maiden, um, Slayer, you know, uh, perhaps uh, a genre that we were kind of a part of, um, um, but uh, we just uh, weren't ready to, you know, release perhaps another Operation Mindcrime, you know, sequel. Um, but um, it was it was one of those albums that uh, we were obviously very proud of, as well as the others. But um, it, it it certainly uh, got a lot of recognition, and you know, we're very grateful for that. Promised Land um, was another release that uh, perhaps you could say it had a conceptual side to it, but um, it, it was one of those albums that, uh, you know, after following the success of Empire and the tour and everything, it, um, it kind of sort of, you know, took us to this, you know, this place where after touring for 12, what, 14 months uh, on, in the release of, you know, in support of Empire, it, uh, it sort of brought us back down to this place where Wow, let's let's take a little breather here, and um, it, because we were so busy in support of Empire that it exhausted us, and we just felt that uh, 
you know, take a little bit of time off. And uh, at that time, in the, during the, the, the writing stages of uh, Promised Land, uh, there was this movement that sort of hit you right in the face called grunge. And uh, we were uh, kind of uh, sort of in the, in the back, you just kind of watching it all while we just kind of kept to our guns and, and uh, we're, we're writing uh, all the compositions for, for Promised Land. But um, it, it, it hit really hard. Um, and, uh, and so here's this, you know, just like maybe the 60s and 70s, you know, and, and the 80s here, uh, it, it, it kind of, there's always this sort of new wave of music that uh, kind of comes around. And um, that certainly was one of them, you know. And I tell you, like I said earlier, it, it hit really hard. I mean, you're, you're, it was nothing anybody expected. No, we we've been through uh, through a few record companies, um, record labels. Uh, we started off with EMI, uh, then went to Atlantic, Sanctuary Records. Um, we're with uh, Century Media at the moment, but um, you know it's interesting um, being in this business for over 30 years. I've seen quite a bit of change, you know. Um, you know, when we first started back in the early 80s, uh, record companies were signing bands with three, four, five, seven record contracts. Um, and that pretty much doesn't exist anymore. Um, it, it's the, the whole dynamic of the industry has changed um, quite a bit. Um, but we, we've seen the transition from the 80s and 90s and, and the 2000s, you know. I mean, there, there's, there's been quite of you know, quite a bit of change when it comes to how you how we record. Um, we were recording on two-inch, you know, analog tape back in the day. Um, then it worked its way onto digital recording. Then you know, from 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 uh, cassette tapes being released, albums being released, and then that sort of phased out. Then you've got your CDs, you know, your DVDs, um, and then that sort of is slowly phasing out. You know, now you got your MP3 downloads, and uh, it's amazing though how how it's all evolved. And, uh, and it, the most interesting, you know, part of it all is, is I sometimes think about, okay, I've seen, I've been a part of the 80s, I've been a part of the 90s and 2000s, right? It's like, where is this going to be? What, what, what's, what's, uh, what's in the future? What, what is it that, what's next, basically, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's kind of scary, but... It's also, you know, there's some excitement to it, knowing that, okay, there's something that you're going to be a part of that's going to be, some, that's part of change as well. What we have a control over is what we do, what we have a passion for, you know, um, and that is to create music, tour. But um, it, it has, uh, this industry certainly has changed over the last three decades. Where we're at now is sort of, um, it's sort of kind of come around full circle. I mean, we started in the 80s, um, and a lot of those uh, 80s bands that we sort of uh, grew up with, um, a lot of them are still around today. And, uh, you know, we, we, we it, it's, it's, the fact that a lot of these bands are still around today is, is because of that hardcore fan base, you know, and as long as that fan base is still around, these bands are going to st still be around, you know. Um, it, it's, it's, it's amazing though, uh, after three decades of this music industry, um, you know, what, what, what you've seen, what you've been a part of, you know, there's a lot of bands that don't exist anymore, you know, and it's unfortunate, but there are a lot of, a hell of a lot of other bands that are still alive and kicking today and we're very fortunate to be one of them. Well, um, we were sort of at a crossroads and 
um, things weren't really working out too well for, you know, the the four original members, um, and a decision had to be made. Um, that decision was made, um, so here we are. Well, you would think that, you know, you'd have all your ducks lined up in a row, you know, but um, um, we were like right there at that, at you know, at that crossroad, wondering, okay, well, some decisions need to be made. What's our backup plan? And uh, Michael uh, was working on a side project. And uh, he had told us he was going to take some time to, you know, to write his own little sort of, you know, solo CD. But uh, um, he was working with this uh, singer who's actually a drummer first and foremost, and, an, or, and a really good drummer, um, named Todd Latore. I call him LT, so you might hear me call LT out uh, during this whole interview but um, he was able to um, hire him to work on his solo project and at the time when we made that decision to move on from our former singer um, that's when Mike approached us and hey say listen guys I'm kind of working with this singer um, on my solo project but um, you know um, he's he's aware of the band um, in fact you know uh, after working with him for several weeks, um, this guy can really hit a lot of those notes that Jeff, you know, was able to hit, you know. And um, so, if 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 we want to, you know, if we want to get together and you know audition him, just let me know. And at the time, also Jeff was working on his solo project. He was way well in advance uh, with his solo project. I mean, he was. I, I think it was already uh, released, and he was going to put together a tour. So we were like in limbo for a while, and then that's when uh, Mike approached us and uh, um, suggested uh, LT as as a as a singer for us to sort of perform some cover bands and maybe some Queensrÿche songs, C cover band songs as well as Queensrÿche songs, and we got together, um, and it was one of those. Without realizing and knowing too much about someone, he was well well aware of the band. But when when he came in to when Michael brought him over to rehearsals, um, you know we just kind of sat down, started talking. You know, hey, you know, what do you listen to? Um, you know, and we just started you know, you know, chatting and, and talking about you know what uh, you know obviously about Queensrÿche and. Um, himself as a, as a musician and all and so we just uh, got together this one rehearsal afternoon and um, uh, got everything set up and uh, he uh, he asked uh, hey what do you want to start with he, hey you know you tell us because um, you know um, if you want to rehearse on any Queen Drake songs just let us know which one because uh, you know, I'm sure Michael gave you a list of songs that we could kind of run through, and he goes, "How about Queen of the Reich?" Okay, fine, perfect. So we just started to uh, we started the intro, and here he is um, singing that uh, intro where the the voice sort of ramps right up with that long, screaming, piercing tone, and. Uh, and I'm like playing my bass, you know, and I'm hearing this and I'm looking over and I'm looking at Scott and I go, wow, you know, and I'm just playing and stuff. And so we got through the song and I go, sure, I'm sold, you know, I, I'm, why don't we get together and let's, let's work together. And uh, it was pretty much the consensus for everyone. I mean, it, it, it took just pretty much one song 